Hi guys, David Fine here from Keys Moths. I am here to talk to you about a really, really strange, strange moth. It's a common moth throughout the United States, but unlike most moths that the caterpillar feeds on leaves, this one actually feeds on wood. It's called the carpenter worm moth, and it's a very, very different moth, both in the adult form and the larval form, and we're gonna show you a carpenter worm moth female that we caught in Gulf Hammock in North Florida uh, in the month of April this year, and we're gonna mount that together. I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about it. Let's check out the carpenter worm moth. Prionoxistus robinie, the carpenter worm moth. Guys, this moth is very, very, very strange very strange moth. The caterpillar bores into wood and actually feeds on wood inside of trees. That's how caterpillar eats. And it takes, get this guys, three to four years for the caterpillar to finish its life cycle. Three to four years. So it stays in the as a caterpillar for three to four years. Um, that sounds more like a beetle than it does a moth, right? Now, this is a pair of carpenter worm moths. Uh, this is the female. You can see this massive, massive abdomen. And the male, males are smaller, much, much smaller actually. And the males have this cool yellow hind wing. Now in a future video, I'm gonna show you how to degrease a moth. Some moths that, especially the ones that feed more on roots or they bore into the roots of a, of a tree, or they feed on the wood of a tree, they uh, they absorb a lot of the oils from the tree. And in the moth form, when the creature dies, a lot of times, like this specimen right here, the oil, the wings will get covered with the oil and it'll, it'll look greasy like this. So we're gonna degrease this moth eventually. Uh, but we're here to talk about this cool beauty. Now, the carpenter worm moth scales on the wings are a lot different. They're, they're, it feels like if you were to actually touch the wing, it doesn't feel like a normal butterfly or moth that has scales, like feathery little furry little scales that, that come off on your fingers. This wing is, it almost feels more like a fingernail. There are scales, but don't get me wrong, but it just feels different. It feels different when you pick them up. This, the females are very, very heavy because look at the body on that thing, it's full of eggs. And that's how the females roll. Now, these specimens were caught over 20 years ago. Um, and it's been over 20 years since I've actually taken a carpenter worm moth. But we got one in North Florida this spring. And we're going to mount it for you right now and show you what that's all about. This is our female carpenter worm moth. I have her in a glassine envelope. And look at this thing. Look at this thing. Let me use some tweezers to pick her up for a second. First, first of all, we want to note the antennae. The antennae are, are really cool. They're real thick, real thick antenna that come off of a little tiny little head. Like the little head is so cute, cute little head for the size of the thorax, and the size of the abdomen. Actually, look at the size of the body on this thing. What, an, what a crazy moth. Very, very strange moth, okay? Now, the body, that thing is full of eggs, guys. Okay, when this guy comes to your light sheet, it makes a thud because this thing has some girth, it has some weight, kind of like a sphinx moth, but even probably thicker than the average sphinx moth comparing the size. Now, um, even when you pick it up, you you feel the weight. You pick it up by the forewing, you feel the weight of that body. It's a very heavy moth. It's a very oily moth. It, can, it has a lot of the greases and oils from the tree. And so now we are going to go ahead and mount this specimen right now. Okay, now we're using a number two black enamel pin and pin goes in right in the middle of the thorax and we want the pin to, the pin to exit in between the two 
four legs in the thorax. And that's gonna give us the weight distribution. Now we have, we're gonna have to brace this abdomen up because it's just gonna droop down so heavy. All right, so now let's get this guy on a board. I'm gonna get her on a board. The, the body just barely fits in this. That's a pretty thick grooved board. Body just barely fits inside of this board. And we wanna put it down, wings are nice and straight to the, to the board there. And we're gonna get the antennae squared away. Antennae are strange, they're like curved, hold on a second. All right, folks, so first thing I did was I tried to adjust the antenna to where a place where they might work well. I'll probably have to readjust the antennae after we film the video. Um, Cause when, as soon as we start moving these wings, those, the head, the body's gonna shift. All right, the other thing I did was I propped up the abdomen with a couple pins to help keep it in place, All right? And so now I got my pieces of paper over the top. Let's pin these papers down. Okay. We're gonna pin this paper down. So we can adjust the wings where we want them. Okay, now that we have the wings pinned down, uh, or at least where, kind of where we want them, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the, the big vein here on the left wing. You can actually see the big veins there going through the wings. We're actually gonna use this big vein right here, and we are going to use that vein and we're gonna, without puncturing the wing, we're gonna use that vein to push the wing with the pin where we want it to go, okay? And then we'll do the same thing with the hind wing. We'll use the vein on the hind wing and we'll push the vein, push the wing where we want it to go, all right? Now, I'm doing something that may not be desirable. I'm actually puncturing the wings with the pin just to make sure that they stay in the right place. So I will make a little bit of a hole there in the wing, but I'm okay with that. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna bring it up to the spot where we want it, kind of right around there. And same thing with the hind wing. We'll use the pin to bring it up to the area where we want it. Now, one thing I don't like about this board, I didn't realize that this board wasn't big enough because the wings are, the wing tips are hanging off the end of the board. I have a kind of a fix for that because what will happen is if somebody were to like touch the wing right here, it could kink it and damage the wing because it's hanging off the end of the board. We want it flush and flat, but it's just a little tiny bit. And for the sake of not messing up my specimen, I am going to now pin this guy down on this board. All right, last step. We've got these pieces of paper that we have. This is cardstock paper. And so what we do is when the wing tip hangs off the end of your board and you want to fix it and you don't that's all you got. You, you have your card stop. Just make sure your card stock hangs off the board further than the wing of your insect. Then I pin this down. I'll pin that down. And I'll pin this down. Now, it's not ideal. I'm just letting you know it's not ideal. But it's a it's a get around. We'll we'll get around the problem if we don't have a board big enough for the wings. I should have made the board 
like wider, all right? The body cavity here, the groove is wide enough for the body, but the board's not long enough to have the wings fully on. So that's my fault when I designed this board. All right, now the wings are pinned down. The abdomen of this creature is, is secure and it's pinned up so that, actually I can probably do a better job than that. Let me see if I can prop this abdomen up a little bit more here. I'm gonna try and prop it up. That's yeah, funny. Look at that big old ovipositor there on the back of the abdomen of this female. Big ovipositor. Pretty interesting. That's the, that's the organ that she uses to lay eggs. And uh, it's out there. So, interesting stuff, interesting bug. Um, let me adjust the antenna a little bit so that they look more even the antennae weren't quite long enough to uh, fit underneath the piece of paper so we just have to kind of makeshift put the antenna the right way the right so that they look right Okay. All right, guys, the head of the insect is mounted. The antenna are somewhat straight. The body's propped up. The wings are symmetrical and we are gonna wait now for this carpenter worm moth specimen to dry. All right, finally, folks, the last step is obviously always, always, always label your moth. Now this is a large label, but this is a large moth. See, if we're able to fit the entire name. Prionoxtus rabinii, the carpenter worm moth, is a female and caught at Gulf Hammock, Levy County, Florida. And always the date so that you can have that scientific data. And it's very valuable. Without the labels, guys, it's, you know, you miss out on a lot of science and a lot of opportunity to help science when you don't label your insects. So guys, that's about all for the carpenter moth. So folks, hope you liked the video on the carpenter worm moth, super strange moth, big, creepy, creepy, big abdomen. Those eggs must be huge. All right, one of these days I'll try and raise that bug and show you the life cycle, but three to four years to wait that's a long time to wait to raise one moth. So uh, guys, hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a like, like the video. And if you don't wanna miss out on any of the Keys Mods action, make sure you hit the bell for notifications because we're gonna to continue to put out new videos like this for you to show you all the moths and butterflies that we can from the beautiful state of Florida, including 100 species of moths from the Florida Keys, 100 species of butterflies from the Florida Keys, 600 species of moths from the Florida Keys, just from the Florida Keys. And we've got them all photographed there for you on our website, keysmoz.com. And uh, you can check it out there. We've got some really, really nice photography there for you. Guys, hope you liked the video. Let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Take care.